Thank you, Claude and Liz. Dear colleagues, <coughs> I have no conflict of interest regarding this uh, presentation. As you know, recent uh, guidelines proposed to use bedside ultrasound in order to evaluate uh, some uh, the etiology, the cause of uh, respiratory failure. And uh, it was uh, proposed by our colleague Daniel Liechtenstein uh, to use this uh, blue protocol in order to try to identify the cause of uh, the respiratory uh, failure. In uh, the ICU, as uh, pointed out by the, by the previous uh, speaker, there are some uh, limitations to the use of uh, CT scan related to the risk of uh, radiation exposure to the transplantation. It is also very time consuming and fastidious to analyze uh, the, the, the data. However, CT remains a research tool and also the reference method. Regarding ultrasounds, they, they have been used for a long time to assess pleural effusion, to try uh, to evaluate the volume of pleural effusion, and also to direct the drainage and to make it uh, more safe. <coughs> Regarding lung parenchyma, in this video, you can see a normal aspect with a lung sliding related uh, to the glissement of the two visceral layers on each other, and also A lines related to the artifacts uh, due to the pleural layer. When uh, there is some part of lung edema, there are B lines on uh, ultrasound examination and more than three lines are related to the presence of uh, an interlobular septal edema. And uh, when the number is increasing, you have this uh, ground glass rocket aspect. And uh, many authors have proposed to use this uh, lung ultrasound score when uh, the aspect is normal with A lines, the score is coded zero. One point uh, when uh, you observe only few lines, uh, three to four B lines, when uh, you have uh, uh, more than uh, five to seven B lines and coalescent B lines uh, is coded B, do like uh, in this uh, video aspect. And three points when there is this aspect of consolidation. And uh, in this consolidation, you can see, in some instances, dynamic air bronchogram. This uh, lung ultrasound score can be calculated by exploring six areas from each side and uh, you get the sum of the ultrasound score. Regarding comparison of the aspect between uh, ultrasound and CT scan, regarding consolidation, there is no huge difference between these two aspects. However, for example, ground glass opacification in, on CT scan is rep represented in using ultrasounds by few B lines. <coughs> and uh, as you can see here, when there are only three to four B lines, it corresponded to second interlobular septa, as can be seen here on the CT scan. There is also a reaeration score, which is uh, important to dynamically explore the effect of PIP. For example, here there is a consolidation and with PIP you can observe a normal aspect with A lines. This is got five points. 
Here, you have some coalescent B lines. It's a B2. And uh, with PIP, you can get less B lines, B1, and it's one point. And you can calculate the rearration score. Using color Doppler, you can also assess intrapulmonary shunt, as shown here. In red, the arterial flow, and in blue, the venous blood flow. What is finally the reliability of uh, ultrasounds? Ultrasounds have been compared to other techniques, and the reference being uh, CT scan. And it has been shown, shown that uh, lung ultrasonography is associated with a very good specificity in order to identify pleural effusion, also consolidation, and alveolar interstitial syndrome. Regarding sensitivity, for example, there is a reduced sensitivity. It's uh, 75 percent for the diagnosis of pneumothorax with a very good specificity. And uh, the sensitivity, I said, was 100 percent uh, for to identify consolidation with a specificity of only 78 percent. There was also in this study a very good correlation between the number of B lines and the severity of ARDS. Here, male form, moderate ARDS, and severe ARDS. And uh, in experimental studies and in this uh, clinical study, the number of B lines was compared to extravascular lung water obtained by the thermodilution technique. And uh, as you can see here, there was a good correlation between uh, these uh, two techniques. And from a dynamic point of view, the, the diagnostic performance of uh, lung ultrasound score was evaluated in RDS patients presenting with septic shock, and the authors assessed the effect of uh, fluid loading on the lung and the lung ultrasound score. And you can see on this uh, picture that there was an, an increase in the lung ultrasound score, and uh, this increase was sustained. What about the evaluation of recruitment and the setting of PIP in ILDS patients? <coughs> it's uh, possible to differentiate patient presenting diffuse loss of aeration, patients with uh, diffuse lung infiltrates, from patients with more focalized lung injuries, patients with focal loss of uh, aeration. By, uh, for example, examining anterior parts of the lungs, if there are some B lines aspect, you can probably evaluate that uh, it is a patient, this is a patient with a diffuse loss of aeration. In contrast, when uh, there is this aspect, this normal aspect with A lines, it's probably related to focal loss of aeration, which was confirmed by exploring the most dependent part of the lung with a consolidation. And some authors proposed to set PIP according to the evaluation of uh, uh, ultrasound aspect in the anterior part of uh, the lungs. And uh, when only A lines are present, there is for them the risk of uh, overinflation, and they recommend to use PIP levels of at a maximum of 10 centimeters of water. In contrast, when in the anterior part of the lungs there are diffuse B lines, <coughs> they suggest to increase progressively PIP and to observe if there is a 
progressive decrease in the number of B lines and uh, ultimately a normalization of the aspect. When uh, uh, respiratory mechanics are compared to lung infrasounds, such as in this uh, study, the authors reported that mean PIP uh, evaluated uh, by ultrasound assessment was higher than the lower inflection point. In uh, this uh, study, the authors compared PV curve results and lung uh, ultrasound score to assess PIP-induced lung recruitment. This study was done in, in patients sedated and paralyzed, and volume recruitment was assessed by PIP release maneuver uh, for patients with diffuse lung infiltrates and for patients with focal infiltrates by comparing two PV curves done at zero and uh, PIP 15. And they reported that there was a good relationship between PIP-induced lung recruitment evaluated by respiratory mechanics with lung ultrasound re-aeration score. And they showed that when this score was at least of eight, the volume of recruitment was higher than 600 milliliters. In contrast, when the score was at a maximum of four, there was few uh, and in some cases, no recruitment. And they also compared the effect of P5, uh, 15, sorry, in uh, the anterior part of the chest wall, the left side, and the posterior part of the chest wall in patients with diffuse loss of aeration and in patients with focal loss of aeration. White bars are representing an improvement in aeration. And you, you can see that uh, uh, by ultrasounds, the ray aeration is higher in the non-dependent part of the lungs with only few uh, ray aeration in patients with diffuse infiltrates in the posterior part of chest wall and very few recruitment, if you want, in the posterior area of patients with a focal loss of aeration. Recently, the e effect of prone positioning was assessed using, using lung ultrasounds, and the authors showed that when patients presenting focal loss of aeration were compared to patients with more diffuse infiltrate, there was absolutely not any um, difference regarding re aeration, excepting a slight increase in uh, the non-dependent part of the lung, which was uh, expected. And uh, it was impossible to identify patients who would be uh, present a response in terms of improvement in oxygenation using lung ultrasound. This is in contrast with, with another recent study which suggests that when the two anterior parts of the lungs are normal, there is a specificity of 100% to predict a response to prone positioning. Re-aeration was also studied in patients presenting ventilator-associated pneumonia, and it was shown that there was a good correlation with CT scan re-aeration assessment. And uh, when there is no activity of uh, the antibiotics, there was also a good uh, correlation between the, uh, these two techniques. Finally, it was also possible it is also possible to predict uh, winning uh, failure. This uh, uh, lung ultrasound evaluation was done just uh, prior starting spontaneous breathing trial and at the end of this uh, exam. The black bars are representing the recruitment during this period. And you can see that in patients with winning failure, 
there was more the recruitment as compared with patients with winning success. In uh, conclusion, bedside lung ultrasound allowed us to regionally analyze the lung aeration in ARDS patients to identify lung morphology, patients presenting with diffuse lung injury versus patients with more focal loss of aeration. It is also important to evaluate cardiac function to discard some diagnosis, but also to evaluate right ventricular function. But there are some important uh, limitations with uh, echo. Uh, lung ultrasound is not able to evaluate uh, lung over inflation, uh, inflation which is uh, uh, an important mechanism of ventilator-induced lung injury. And uh, as you know, in uh, about 20% uh, of the cases, it is not possible uh, to do this uh, exam. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Laurent, for your very clear talk. Yes, please. Microphone is coming. No? Uh, is there a problem here? Yeah. Uh, that when we do lung ultrasound, you said in the posterior chest wall, you don't see much recruitment. Uh, so if you are using PEEP and you see recruitment uh, in the anterior chest wall, but the patient is still hypoxic, would you still titrate your PEEP up as the anterior chest wall shows recruitment, but the posterior chest wall may not show recruitment? So how would you proceed with that case? As uh, I said previously, I was very cautious with the use of uh, ultrasounds to direct uh, PEEP uh, settings. It's a useful tool uh, to identify patients with normal uh, lung areas in the anterior part of the lungs, with probably uh, an increased risk of uh, overinflation. However, it's uh, very difficult, it's a difficult issue uh, to evaluate recruitment in the dependent part of the lung. In the study uh, of Buemad, as I showed, you observe that there was very few <coughs> recruitment assessed by lung intrasound, even in patients with diffuse lung injury, which is uh, uh, very uh, unexpected. So, from my point of view, there are some advantages to use lung intrasound, for example, for pleural effusion, pneumothorax, and uh, also uh, to uh, evaluate if uh, my first uh, PEEP setting would be high if the patient uh, present diffuse infiltrates, or if uh, I will be cautious with my setting if uh, I observe normal aspect in the non-dependent part of the lungs. How many of you are, is, are using uh, ultrasound to titrate the PEEP at the bedside? So no one. Okay. Any, any other comment or question? Maybe one, which is a bit related. Uh, we know that ultrasound is very um, operator dependent. <coughs> And I was um, asking myself, what is the learning curve to be really able to assess uh, lung recruitment using mm. ultrasound? Uh, the learning curve uh, has been studied uh, in uh, echocardiography uh, and uh, to a lesser extent uh, regarding lung, uh, um, lung ultrasounds. But uh, it's uh, probably uh, not, uh, and uh, those who uh, evaluated the duration, um, said that uh, the duration is uh, shorter than for cardiac evaluation. And uh, as I showed, the usual aspects are very easy to, to detect. So inter-observer uh, variation or uh, the ability to, to do a lung ultrasound is uh, uh, fast to, to, to obtain. We can, it's not a, a 
difficult problem. Thank you.